In this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can complete an end-to-end -end workflow in Fluent, starting from a space claim geometry file, proceeding through the setup of case settings, and ending with the post-processing of the results. To begin, I've selected the watertight geometry workflow and imported my space claim geometry, which Fluent automatically displayed. Here you can see a simple manifold with three inlets and one outlet. I don't need to insert a local sizing, so I'll click Update and I'll create the surface mesh using the default values which are sufficient for this case. You can see the maximum cell size previewed in the graphics window. This mesh will contain both fluid and solid regions and I need to extract a flow volume, so I'm describing the geometry as such. I've got to enclose the manifold so that I can extract the flow volume, which I'll do by creating caps for all of the inlets and the outlet. With capping complete, I can review the boundary conditions. In this case, Fluent has automatically assigned the correct boundary types due to the name selections that were defined in SpaceClaim. So all I need to do is click Update Boundaries. This geometry only has one fluid region, so I'll create it. Fluent got the regions correct, so I'm ready to move on to creating the volume mesh. Once again, the defaults are fine here for this case, so I'll create the volume mesh. Here's the mesh that Fluent generated. And with a quick mesh check, I can confirm that this mesh is a good one. So I'll move on to setting up my case. I'm enabling the K Epsilon Turbulence model for this manifold. I also need to set boundary conditions, which I'm grouping by type for convenience. I'll start with one of the inlets, which will have a velocity of 10 meters per second and moderate turbulent intensity. I'm going to use the same settings for each of these inlets, so I've copied these settings to the other inlets. At the outlet, all I want to do is ensure that I've got sensible values in case of any backflow or recirculation during the calculation. Now, before I begin solving, I'll create a couple of quantities that I can monitor as the calculation progresses to help me judge convergence. First, I'm creating a velocity monitor on a point on the outlet. I've also created a custom report definition for the mass imbalance. Now I'm ready to start the calculation. I'll initialize the flow field using the hybrid initialization technique, which gives an initial guess of the solution. Then I'll run the simulation for up to 500 iterations, or until the residuals have converged. You can see the mass imbalance being plotted, and it should trend very closely to zero. You can also see the point velocity gradually changing as the solution proceeds. Now I've got a converged solution, so it's time to post-process the results. I'll plot path lines showing the flow from the inlets to the outlet. These will be colored by residence time, which makes it easy to see where the flow is recirculating. I'm adding path lines to a scene, so I can include a contextual geometry on a clip surface that I created. I'll also check out velocity contours at the outlet so I can view the uniformity of the outflow. Turning off node values plots the actual results of each cell, which makes it easier to see. You can tell there's quite a bit of separation around the inside of the bend. This concludes this demonstration of an end-to-end -end fluid flow simulation in ANSYS Fluent. Thanks for watching.